Greetings again, everybody. We're going to talk here about acute lymphocytic leukemia. This will uh, be the first of my revamped videos, I guess, on the leukemias. And these are fairly high yield for your exam, at least understanding how to recognize it and how to go about diagnosing it. As we're going to see with treatment, it's a little dicey because there are a lot of different treatment regimens, um, but um, there are some standard regimens, some classic regimens that you should put in your back pocket, and we will get to that. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so this is the blood cancer family tree. I found this online, but I think it's useful to get an understanding that all of our so-called blood cells, platelets, red blood cells, T cells, B cells, plasma cells, and so forth, um, they all come from the same stem cell. And which leukemia we have uh, depends on where the mutation is and which cell is proliferating. So if we're more up here with the immature cells, we're likely going to be dealing with an acute leukemia, whereas if we're down here, we're more likely to be dealing with a chronic leukemia because chronic leukemias tend to be more mature cells. So let's just take a quick overview of acute leukemias. Remember, these are ALL, AML. And then um, there's hairy cell leukemia, which is kind of a black sheep. We'll have a whole video on that. Uh, so what happens here is that you've got those blasts, those immature cells, and they live in the bone marrow. And you get a mutation, and this cell is going to clonally proliferate. This one cell, so clonal, you, they're all the same. Uh, and when it proliferates in the marrow, it's going to crowd everything out. And so you don't have the resources to make platelets. You don't have the resources to make red blood cells. You don't have the resources to make other white blood cells um, that you would need to fight things off. What you have here is a ton of white blood cells, but they're not working. They're not, um, they're, they're not effective. So what you'll have is an anemia. You'll have a thrombocytopenia and all the symptoms that come with it. And then a quote unquote leukopenia. Like I said, that is, you may have a high uh, white count on your CBC, but that high white count is sort of artificial because those are all cancer cells. They're not working. And so functionally, they are leukopenic. Um, so they're going to have a hard time fighting off infections. And then you can have some other more um, uh, non-specific symptoms, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, lymphadenopathy, bone pain. You can also get those, um, those constitutional features or B signs, uh, things like fever, weight loss, night sweats, and so forth. All right, um, so there is an increased risk with genetic disorders uh, as well as exposure to various carcinogens, and ALL is the most common in children. Now, we're going to see ALL can be broken up into B cell ALL, which is the most common, and T cell ALL, which is much less common. Now, the bone marrow biopsy, just to kind of point this out, uh, this is the most accurate test for diagnosing acute leukemia because we can see the cells that are in the bone marrow, and it's the only thing that's going to help you distinguish the two leukemias, ALL and AML. Clinically, they present almost identically. Uh, however, you will be helped in knowing that if this is a three-year-old, it's probably ALL. If this is a 50-year-old, it's probably AML, so that helps. Um, in order to diagnose leukemia, you need to have at least 20% blasts on biopsy. And then with ALL, those cells will stain positive for CALA, also known as CD10, and TDT. Now, CALA, the one exception is that this will be negative in T-cell ALL. So in T-cell ALL, CALA is negative, okay? And that's a distinguishing feature. AML, you probably remember from, from step one, you'll see those hour rods and it'll be positive for myeloperoxidase. All right, so let's take a look at a vignette. We got a five-year-old boy coming into the clinic with his mom complaining of sluggishness for the last two weeks. She says that lately he's had a hard time keeping up with his siblings, needs to rest a lot, and he's taking a lot of naps. She says that yesterday he told her he hurts all over and so now she's taking him in. His appetite has been normal, review of systems is otherwise unremarkable, birth history is unremarkable, family history non-contributory, on no medications, otherwise healthy, his height and weight are fine, vitals, blood pressure 101 over 60, 
that's normal. Heart rate 140, that's a little high. Respirations 25, that's pretty normal. Temperature 101.9, so he's febrile and we don't know why. Physical exam reveals petechiae on the legs, pale conjunctiva, liver and spleen not palpable, the rest of the exam is normal. So take a look here, pause it. What stands out? This stands out. So he's sluggish and needs to rest a lot. Kids should not be doing that. He's taking naps more frequently. That's not normal. I mean, you have this change in his energy level. That's concerning. He hurts all over. Well, we don't know what's causing that, but kids shouldn't hurt. You know, if this was a 70-year-old trying to keep up with their grandkids, okay, maybe osteoarthritis, uh, but that shouldn't be happening. He is mildly tachycardic and he's febrile. So there's probably some kind of occult infection going on. Then we see petechiae. Petechiae, when I say petechiae, you say thrombocytopenia. Petechiae is um, typically seen, most commonly seen with a thrombocytopenia. It's platelet type bleeding. You can also see, you know, bleeding of the gums, menorrhagia and stuff like that. Pale conjunctiva, that's anemia, okay? So uh, we are dealing with a, thro uh, sorry, a pancytopenia here. Now, pancytopenia, you know, the white count could be high, could be low, but either way, um, it's not, these are not functional white cells. So our differential here, we're really looking at the acute leukemias. Reactive lymphocytosis would not explain the low platelets. Aplastic anemia would not explain low platelets or the infections. Immune thrombocytopenia would not explain the anemia. So this is our workup. We want to get a CBC with smear, peripheral blood smear, BMP, PTPTT because of the bleeding, liver function tests, LDH, and then because he is uh, got, has some kind of fever of unexplained origin, we want to find out if there is indeed an infection. So anytime we think there may be an infection, but we don't know where, blood culture, UA with culture, chest x-ray. And what we find, pretty much everything is normal with the exception of a low hemoglobin, a leukocytosis, and a thrombocytopenia, and there are blasts. So now we know that we are dealing with an acute leukemia, okay? So what's our next step? Bone marrow biopsy. That will definitively tell us what we're dealing with. And really at this point, it's really ALL versus AML. If I were a betting man, which I sometimes am, I would go with ALL here because of his age. That's it. And what we find is hypercellularity with 25% blast, confirming leuke acute leukemia, no hour rods. We would expect to see that in AML. Stains positive for, uh, for Kala and TDT, so we are dealing with a B-cell ALL here. Management will admit this kid. Uh, we need to consult pediatric oncology. Because, his, uh, because he's pretty anemic, we want to transfuse him, so we need to get a type, and we will transfuse, transfuse him with packed red blood cells. Because he's got an infection, we don't know where it's coming from. We need to give broad-spectrum antibiotics. Ftazidine is a good one. We're going to need to get a lumbar puncture. We need to see if there is CNS spread of this leukemia. And so what we do is we get that lumbar puncture, and while we're doing it, we administer intrathecal methotrexate to reduce the risk of um, spreading that. Um, we'll place him in isolation for his own health and then counsel patient, um, reassure patient and family and so forth. That's going to be important, by the way, for, CS, uh, for CCS. Okay. Uh, this is our differential. We kind of already went over this. So ALL is the proliferation and accumulation of lymphoid progenitor cells in the blood, bone marrow, and other tissues. It is not super common overall, but it is the most common leukemia in children, particularly in very young children. Peak incidence, three to four years of age, so expect us to see this in kind of preschool age children. Um, the survival is inversely related to age. So kids with this have a pretty good prognosis, adults not so much. And there is an increased incidence in chrom with chromosomal abnormalities, particularly Down syndrome, uh, as well as Klinefelter syndrome, but Down syndrome is a big one. They may give you that as part of the vignette. Um, early symptoms are fairly nonspecific, sort of those B symptoms, um, and then the pancytopenia. That's what's gonna be given on your vignette. Uh, remember the best initial test is a CBC with peripheral smear. You may see lymphoblasts. If you're still not sure, uh, then you can go on to do a bone marrow biopsy, but either way, we have to get a bone marrow biopsy. Um, so even if you don't see lymphoblasts, if there's a high, um, high index of suspicion, go ahead and get the bone marrow biopsy. 
Um, when you order it on CCS, all you need to do is order bone marrow biopsy. That's it. All patients diagnosed with ALL uh, need to get a lumbar puncture with CSF analysis. And when you're doing that, you've got to give methotrexate intrathecally. Um, the standard contraindications for doing a lumbar puncture apply. If you've got profound thrombocytopenia or elevated intracranial pressure signs, you need to uh, address that first. Management, the standard is induction with CVAD. Now, it's not common for you to need to know uh, particular chemotherapeutic regimens on your exam, but if you do, it's usually going to be the, uh, the leukemias and the lymphomas where you really need to know them. So I would remember CVAD, it stands for cyclophosphamide, vincristine, adriamycin, which is a trade name, but it's doxorubicin, and dexamethasone. And then uh, regular CNS prophylaxis is indicated in all patients, you're gonna be giving intrathecal methotrexate. Complications, the chemo-related adverse effects, even though you don't need to necessarily know the chemo regimen, you do need to know the adverse effects of the chemo drugs. And this is step one stuff. Uh, tumor lysis syndrome, uh, we know what that is. That's the cells get destroyed, they spill their contents out. One of the big problems is that you can develop crystalline arthropathy like um, classical gout, or you can get uh, you can get uric acid stones, for instance, in the kidneys, and that can cause a renal failure. Um, we can prophylax them with allopurinol and vigorous hydration. And then, of course, complications related to the cytopenias. Um, now, T-cell ALL, um, it's about 15% of cases in children. Think of a teenager if they come in and you diagnose them with ALL. Um, but uh, what you're going to see here is that it's Kala negative, and the, uh, the markers that it expresses are the T-cell markers, so the low numbers. Um, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8. Um, versus B-cell ALL, which will express Kala, as well as 19 and 20. Uh, it will still express TDT, though. And this is our recap. Um, so we talked about ALL presents with deficiencies in the cell line. So fatigue, easy bruising and infections. You may have those B symptoms, um, fatigue, night sweats and stuff like that, uh, weight loss. Best initial test is a peripheral smear. Most accurate test is a bone marrow biopsy. You need to have more than 20% blast. That's an important number to remember. The markers are CALA and TDT. Remember if you have hour rods, that's AML. CNS involvement's common, so we need to get um, a lumbar puncture with CSF cytology and administer interthecal methotrexate as a CNS prophylaxis, and the induction is CVAD.